Okay, in today's video, I'm going to go over a qualitative description of two-dimensional projectile motion when an object is projected with some initial velocity at some angle above the horizon. And this is the situation that we have. We have this object. It's going to be a projected with some initial velocity at some angle above the horizon. And when it does that, it leaves the ground and it follows this nice parabolic path. And we want to talk about why does it follow that nice parabolic path. And it really does that because it's doing two things. This object is doing two things at the same time, and those two things that it's doing are really independent of each other. And the two things that it's doing is it's moving in the x direction and in the y direction at the same time. But like I said, those two motions are independent of each other. And we're going to go through the differences between the motion in the x and the motion in the y direction. Now before we do that, we really have to talk a little bit about the forces because it's the forces that cause the change in motion. And obviously, this object is not moving in a straight line, so it's motion, it's velocity, it's changing. And what causes those changes? Well, changes in motion, changes in velocity are caused by unbalanced forces. And as this object travels through the air, there's only one force acting on the object at each point in time. And that is the force of gravity. The force of gravity acts negative y, no negative y direction. Now, a lot of people think, well, there must be some force acting in the x direction because the ball is actually obviously moving across horizontally in the x direction. But once it leaves this point where it's been projected, there are no other forces that cause the object to move in the x direction. Objects in motion stay in motion. Objects that stay at rest unless acted upon by an unbalanced force. So a lot of people think, well, when the ball is up here, there must be some force acting in the x direction because the ball is moving also horizontally in the x direction. There is no other forces. There's only one force acting on the object, and that is the force of gravity, and that is acting in the y direction, negative y down. Okay? Now, that means for the x direction, there are no forces acting on the ball. Sure, there was some force down here that got it started, but once it leaves the ground, there's no forces acting in the x direction. So that means the forces are balanced. The sum of the forces, if there are no forces, the sum of the forces is zero. They're balanced forces. If the forces are balanced, then the acceleration is zero. In the x direction, the object is not accelerating. That means it has a constant velocity. Now, if we can figure out, which we'll do in the next video, we'll talk about, we know the initial velocity, we can determine the component of the initial velocity that is acting in the x direction. We might call that VIX, velocity initial x. Well, what's the velocity at every other point in time during the object's path? Well, the forces are balanced, the acceleration is zero, the velocity is constant. That means VI is equal to all the other velocities. So if we know the initial velocity, in the x direction. Then we know the velocity in the x direction at every other point in time. So I drew these vectors, vx, with the same length, the same magnitude, because the velocity in the x direction doesn't change. Now what about in the y direction? Well, somewhat obviously, there's only one force acting on the object in the y direction. So the forces cannot be balanced. That means they're unbalanced. And if they're unbalanced, the object is accelerating. Now, in this case, two-dimensional projectile motion, projectile motion, in the y direction, the object is really experiencing free fall. And the acceleration is equal to the acceleration due to gravity during free fall. That's what we mean by free fall. The object is falling freely out of the sky, so to speak. So the acceleration in the y direction, which we sometimes use g, the acceleration due to gravity, but I have acceleration in the y direction is equal to minus 9.81 meters per second squared, because the acceleration is in the negative direction. Okay, we'll talk more about that in the next slide. But it's a constant acceleration, but it is accelerating, and therefore the object is changing its velocity. Now I'm going to get rid of these force vectors, and I'm going to draw in the velocity vectors. There is some initial velocity in the y direction. Well, as the object goes up in the y direction, it slows down. So I'm going to draw the next velocity vector a little smaller, the next one a little smaller. And when it reaches the top of its path, it has no velocity in the y direction. It has a velocity in the x direction, but the velocity in the y direction at the top of its path is zero. 
And then the velocity starts to increase in the negative direction. These are all positive, this is negative, and then it comes down and it's speeding up. It's accelerating in the negative direction. Okay, here it's also accelerating in the negative direction, but slows down, stops, and then it speeds back up as it comes back down like that. Okay, so that's the important things you should know about the velocity in the x, excuse me, the motion in the x and the motion in the y. Balanced forces, no acceleration. Unbalanced forces, acceleration. Now let's also look at this table really quickly. Here's the information we had from the previous slide. Here's the time, zero, and then one, two, three, four, five, six seconds. One, two, three, four, five, six seconds. That's the time over here. Now I'm telling you that the initial velocity in the x direction is 25 meters per second. I'm just giving you that. That would be something you might get on the problem. Now, the acceleration is zero because the forces are balanced. So what does that mean? The velocity is constant. So if the initial velocity is 25 meters per second, and we're saying the acceleration is zero, so now I can write down here zero. The acceleration is zero in each case. Well, the acceleration is zero. That means the velocity is not changing. That means at each point in time, in the x direction, the object is moving 25 meters per second. Now, what about in the y direction? And we said for free fall, for projectile motion, it's basically experiencing free fall. That means the acceleration at each point in time is minus 9.81 meters per second squared. Well, I'm going to tell you again that the initial velocity in the y direction is 29.43 meters per second. Now, the object is accelerating in the negative direction, 9.81 meters per second squared. That means when it goes up, as it's traveling up, the object is slowing down 9.81 meters per second for every second. So one second later, it's traveling 9.81 meters per second slower. After two seconds, it's traveling another 9.81 meters per second slower. And when it reaches the top in the y direction, the velocity is zero. Well, now it's going to start back down and it's going to speed up, okay? And now it's going to speed up in the negative direction, so the velocities are going to be negative. So if it starts at zero right here and it comes back down, one second later, because it's accelerating 9.81 meters per second squared, it's going 9.81 meters per second in the negative direction. After two seconds, it's two times this, and after three seconds, it's three times that. You'll notice it's symmetrical. If it leaves the ground at 29, comes back and reaches the ground at 29. The positive sign means it's going in the positive direction, which is up. The negative sign simply means that it's going in the negative direction, which is down. This positive sign does not mean speeding up and slowing down. The sign of the velocity is equal to the direction of the motion. Okay, so there you have it. X direction, zero acceleration, constant velocity y direction it is accelerating therefore the velocity is changing okay so there you go that is a nice quick qualitative explanation of two-dimensional projectile motion i hope you found that helpful thank you very much for watching if you did find it helpful please do all of the following three things please subscribe to my channel get all my excellent physics chemistry and math videos Leave me a nice thumbs up for this video and leave me a nice comment in the comment section. And we will see you in the next video. Thank you very much.